YouTubers, welcome back to my YouTube channel with me, your girl, Morgan Tracy J, coming today with another morning coffee. But before we get into this video, boo, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube family. You go ahead, turn on the notification bell. You check me out over on the gram, and also, you check out my blog, my ministry, hisdaughtersclosset.com. So first off, boo, yes, you can have it all. And honestly, this is something that many of us do not really believe, but it also first starts with our mindset. But I've got to give you this disclaimer, because you having it all to you might be different than God's having it all. Because see, there were seasons when I thought having it all was having money, having the certain guy, having the certain body, having the certain bank account. That To me, that was having it all, when in reality, that was low on the spectrum to the all that God truly had for me. You see, there were times I didn't even see my ministry, but I seen other things that I thought was more important. But however, God has shown me that having it all in Him is way, bar way, way better than having it all in other things. Because those other things are gonna end up being empty nothings, right? You'll get the money and you'll still be empty. You'll get the house, but still be depressed. You'll get the, the car, but still not be fulfilled because it's not fulfillment in these things, but it's all in Jesus. And so today I wanna give you some tips on how you can have it all. First thing, boo, is you gotta have it all with your mindset. You see, I grew up in an area where sometimes poverty was around me, and so as I got older, God had to really work on my mindset on saying, just because you see what you see today, it shouldn't stop you from believing what I'm telling you you're gonna have. See, the first thing is, boo, you gotta get your mindset in order. It says in the scripture that we have the mind of Christ, and we always see Jesus talking about being on a mission about his father's business. And so you gotta have the mind of Christ that says, even though this today looks like this, I'm gonna believe in the unseen. I'm going to believe in the vision and the prosperity and the purpose that God said for my life. I'm going to believe that he has good plans for me and a hope for a future. You see, I want to tell you it first starts with your mindset. You can have it all, but your mind has to believe that you deserve it all. Okay. Sometimes we can feel so unworthy that we don't believe we deserve or can have anything. We don't believe that God could bless us. We don't believe that God wants us to be prosperous, right? We can have that mindset or we can get to a mindset that says, you know what? I'm not going to be sitting water. I am not going to be stagnant. That even though my reality does not align to the vision or the purpose that God has told me, I'm going to continue to have a mind of Christ. I am going to continue to have a mind of faith. I am going to continue to have a mind that is not afraid to go and raise somebody from the dead. Or is not afraid of the view or the fear of man. That's not afraid of people's opinion. I am going to have a mindset that even though I may look a little crazy sometimes, I'm going to stand and believe. I want to tell you, I know I look crazy for those years sitting in the office day after day trying to work on a ministry ministry having no money and my parents probably like this girl working on a ministry she ain't even got no job we are the ones paying her bills right all that could have been there but I want to tell you what's so pivotal is you've got to get the mindset of Christ okay a mindset of Christ the next thing guys is all about your vision your vision is about your life see here's the thing we have a gift we have a purpose we have a vision so first off, your gift is what you do naturally. The gift is your gift is something that you're drawn to that just happens, that flows out of you, that no one has to even challenge you to do, no one has to make you do, no one has to pay you to do it. It is just natural. You don't really even have to practice in this area because it just comes and it flows naturally out of you. That is your gift. And your gift will align to a vision and a purpose. Your purpose is why God put you here. Your purpose is what you were predestined to do. Your purpose is what you have to do before your time is up on this planet, okay? Your purpose is the thing that calls you to do something even when it looks crazy. Your purpose is the thing that makes you miss out on sleep or miss out on a dinner because you've got to get something done. That is your purpose. But then you get a vision. And I want to tell you, we always know that if you don't have a vision, it, you're gonna perish. Think about if you got in the car with your mom and you said, mom, where are we going? And she says, I don't know. So you're just driving around, not getting to a destination and so a vision is you getting to a destination, okay? So God gives his people good gifts and I'm gonna tell you one of the best gifts that God gives us is not only our salvation, but he also gives us vision. Vision is what changed the trajectory of my life. Vision is what took me from a girl that had a broken mindset focused on the next guy to a woman that said, hold on, I don't even need a date. I've got a higher calling in Christ Jesus, okay? I want to tell you, you want to get a vision for your life. And how you get a vision for your life is you seek God because your purpose is inside of you. It's a seed within you that you were already brought to earth with. It says in scripture that God knew you before he formed you in your mother's womb. And you know, he's, he knows your name, right? So with that being said is there's a gift and a purpose inside of you that only God can awaken, that only God can ignite. 
And so I want you to get to that and understand God can awaken you to that thing, but you first want to make sure that you are seeking a vision for your life. When you have a vision, you have a destination, and you will re you'll stop roaming aimlessly, and you'll get focused. So if you're someone who says, I have a vision, but I don't know what to do, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, where are you headed? So where are you headed? If you're, if you're in university right now, you're in college, your goal is to graduate college. That's where you're headed, to walk across the stage. How are you going to get there? You might need to get a new uh, study schedule. You might, if you're a woman and you want to build a business, maybe your goal is to work full-time in your business. How are you going to get there? You're going to implement some strategies inside of your business day in and day out. What can you do today? Today you might need to do some research. Today you might need to look at your finances and see what you need to put back or how much more you need to make. You might have to do some of those things. So the thing is, what are you, where, where are you headed? How do you plan to get there? The next thing is, what can you do today to get there? So for me, I knew I was headed to be a speaker. I knew God had called me to speak to God's, to his daughters. He, told, he called me to speak. That's where all I knew I was headed. So how I planned to get there was I planned to get on YouTube and social media to speak. And what I did every day, and I do all day every day, but what I used to do every day is I would do one thing towards that. I would practice speaking, I would look up ideas, I would journal, I would pray, I would seek God on these certain ideas, I would write blogs, all of that, right? So those are things you can do with your vision. The next thing is you gotta believe in provision. See, provision is really God going beforehand, making preparations beforehand, and you have to believe that God is gonna make preparations beforehand, that he's already done some things for you, that even when you're walking in the vision, there are certain doors that are gonna open to you because God has already went before you, he's already prepared before you. So I wanna say it's like if I knew you were gonna come over to my house, I'm gonna make some provision, right? So if you're gonna come over and have dinner with me, I'm probably gonna already get the groceries, that's me making provision. I'm probably already gonna get all the ingredients, I'm probably gonna get the drinks. I'm probably gonna clean up. I'm probably gonna start cooking I'm probably gonna get the plates out the nice ones, right? I'm making provision for when you come the same thing is with God is he knows you're gonna get to this certain place So he's gonna make provision for you. So when you get there that you will flourish in that place Provision is like when you get stuck in an environment and you don't know why you're there, but God is really using that environment to release your potential. That is provision. Provision is like when you let something go and then God opens up another door and he blesses you with something. That's provision. Provision is when you walk into a new room and you feel nervous and timid and then somebody all of a sudden speaks to you and you build a really great friendship from that moment. That's provision. Provision is God going beforehand and giving you what you need. He's planning things. He's preparing for you to get to that place. You can have it all through the provision of God. God wants you to have it all. He wants you to have breakthrough. He wants you to have healing. He wants you to not worry about your finances. He wants you to get the car. He wants you to get the rip paid. He wants you to get the home. God wants provision for you. you God wants you to prosper. He wants you to be great, but he also has given you provision and there are things you have to do and there are steps you have to take. The next thing is, boo, you gotta get a fire and a hustle about you. And you know, we know in scripture that the Holy Spirit is like a wind. It's like a dove. It's like fire. So when you have a fire and a hustle about your vision, that means that no matter what walls or obstacles come, you're not going to tuck your tail in and run away, but you're going to stand and fight. That means that even though you might fall off with God for a whole month, two months, a year, you're going to still keep going. That means that you're not going to give up on what God has called you to do because you have a fire about you, which is the Holy Spirit igniting you and giving you grace to get the thing done. He's anointing your gift to get it done. I want to tell you, you want to get to a place where no matter the obstacle that you face today or tomorrow or next week, you're still going to push through it. No matter the walls that come up against you, no matter what the, the professor was irritating, that you failed the class, that you didn't have the money, that they said no, no matter the obstacles that you face, you're going to continue to move forward and you're not going to give up in God. The reason I say all this is because I have been at places where I battle with God. I've wanted to give up. I wanted to say, God, what was the point? I started my channel in 2015 and even two years later, I didn't even have a thousand subscribers. When I watch other people go from one no subscriber to a million in a year. And I was like, God, I can't even get to a thousand. But I wanted to tell you, but God kept saying, keep working on what I'm telling you to work on. See, I wanted to jump ship. I wanted to do things on my own. I wanted to have it all. I wanted to have what I wanted. When God says, but I want you to stick to the content you're creating. Don't jump ship from the content that I've called you to create right? So I want to tell you, provision comes when you, when you have that provision and you know that, that's when you get a fire and you're willing to put in the work that is necessary to flourish in your vision. Daughters of God, you want to get a fire about you. You want to say, come hell or high waters, I'm here with you, Lord. Come hell or high waters, I'm still going to work on this vision. You know what? They can take my job. There can be a pandemic, but I'm still going to work on my vision. You know what? They can take the internet, but I'm still going to work on my vision. You know what? They can take anything from me, but I'm still going to work on the vision God has given me. That is a fire and a hustle. That means that 
you can get knocked down, but you're going to jump right back up. And that means that you, you get knocked down, but you were looking up and you say, I'm going to get up in Jesus name. That means that you get, you find yourself in a struggle boat. You get caught up in some things, but even though you're caught up there, you say, it ain't going to stop me. I'm going to keep moving forward in Jesus Christ. I always want to tell you the only different thing about me, and it ain't even that different. I'm just a woman that has never given up on God. Even when I felt like I wanted to give up on God, I have never given up on him. I have always said, okay, God, I'm sorry that I gave up yesterday, but I'm back today, right? Trust me. I, that's the only difference. And the ones that win are the ones that never give up. So that's all we are on this journey. People that just decide not to give up, not on our vision, not on our God. We ain't giving up. Tip number five and how you really have it all is you embrace the new reality that God wants to give you. You see, I say this because we see in scripture that it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. See, the true, is, the true form of having it all is not just having a lot of tangible, physical things. Not having the money, not having the body, not having all these things. It's really about having Jesus. Because it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. All these promises, all this prosperity, all these blessings are going to be added unto you. Okay? So that means if God has told you you're going to get a new car, that is added unto you. If God has told you that you're going to have a ministry, you're going to build a business, that is added unto you. If God has said that where your yesterday is no more, he's got something new for you, that is added unto you. If God says that the doors that were once closed to you are now open, that is added unto you. If God said that that breakthrough you could never get has been broke through now, is added unto you. God said that that degree you could never accomplish, you can get accomplished now, that is added unto you. I want to tell you, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things are going to be added unto you. So many desires that God has put in your heart, so many ideas God has placed before you is added unto you, daughter of God. And I want you to realize that yes, you can have it all because you have it all through Jesus Christ. Because he is your fulfillment. He is the one that holds you in the late night hour. He is the one that helps your soul when you're going through mourning and suffering. He is the one that encourages you and gives you hope for a future. He is the one that gives you a new word and a new fire within when you feel dry and desolate. He is the one that gives you a vision for your life when you feel hopeless. He is the one that helps you through your depression. He is the one that releases you from the anxiety. He is the one that breaks down the walls in your life. He is the one that heals you from the trauma. He is the one that opens up the doors that have been shut to you. Our God alone is what you need. You can have it all through God. Yes, daughter, you can have it all because our God says you can. Because he is adding more and more things to you as you expand your capacity in him, as you expand your faith in him. And I want to tell you, daughters of God, this is from Derek Prince. The only way you move forward is if you move forward in faith. The only way you please God is with your faith, not with your sacrifice or obedience, but you first please him with your faith, with your belief in him. And that makes sense why the enemy always wants to come against your belief. He always wants to change challenge your belief. He always wants to challenge what you believe in God. Oh, God's not real. He doesn't care for me. I'm unworthy. Look what I did. He could never love me. I'm a sinner. Da, da, da. See, all this stuff is going to get in the way. The enemy wants to plant that in you, but I want you to get the mindset of Christ. I want you to be willing to see the vision before you. I want you to be willing to believe in the provision of God. I want you to be willing to believe in the Holy Spirit fire that is inside of you. And I want you to be willing to realize that you get a new reality because when you realize all these things are added unto you, just because you're in the kingdom of God, you have every Everything you need to be everything you're gonna be. You have it all, daughter. It's inside of you. It's not in them. It's not out there. It's not in the relationship. It's not in the guy that calls you on the phone. Boo. Uh uh uh. It is inside of you. And so I wanna challenge you today, daughter, that you can have it all. And if you believe that in your spirit, I want you to comment down below that you can have it all. I believe that for you. I believe it for you. And I'm trying to tell you today, there were so many things I wanted. So many things I wanted. And God said no to those because he had something bigger and better and more glorious and something that was going to fulfill me in ways that those other things were pure nothing. So trust me, you can have it all in God. So seek ye first God, his kingdom, his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you, daughter. Well, ladies, I hope this video blessed you and encouraged you. If it did, go ahead and comment down below that you can have it all. And I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys. Love you. I want you to comment down. <laughs> Mont, I want you to comment. Mont, I want you to comment down. <laughs> Mont, quit barking. That's the best.